So what do you think of when you hear active transport? Uh, I'm not sure what to think. Okay. When you think active, think it requires energy. Okay? Um, or it uses ATP to drive whatever's happening. Okay? Right. Um, yeah, if you ever see anything active in biology, it usually means it requires energy. Like, for example, like um, with like muscle contraction, there's um, this like a passive um, muscle lengthening, which would be like this, right? Right. I'm not using energy to relax, right? But if I was resisting and lengthening, that would be active lengthening because I'm contracting the muscle. Can make sense. Yeah. So with active transport, we're taking using energy to transport one molecule from one side to the other side of the membrane, right? right? And usually it has to do with going they call it against the concentration gradient, right? Um, and what that means is, so um, so you have a, a membrane, right? <clears throat> and you've got this protein. And it's just like a channel, right? Um, so let's take that sod that sodium channel we were talking about, right? right? So we've got a really high concentration of sodium on the inside, and we have a low concentration of the sodium on the outside. So concentrations, they will naturally flow from high to low, right? right. And so as soon as you open this up, which doesn't require energy per se, it's like a voltage gated channel, that's technically not an, an active transporter. Um, it just selectively opens at certain situations. And so the sodium would go um, past through the cell. It's called facilitated diffusion, right? Because right. diffusion would just be going through the membrane like water. Osmosis is an example of diffusion. Facilitated diffusion means it needs a protein to be able to pass through. Um, but it happens passively, okay? Diffusion is a passive process. It doesn't require energy. Right. So, but then with that, um, so if we're pumping sodium out of the cell, right, <clears throat> eventually sodium needs to get back in the cell, right? right? And it never gets rid of, like, all of it. And so the concentration, even though sodium's leaving, will still be high on the inside, right? So we need another transporter, to bring sodium in, right? right? And so, but because we're going from low to high, it doesn't want to go. It doesn't want to go, right? right? So it requires energy to pull it into the cell. So a little ATP will come in and then come off as ADP plus a phosphate, right? And uses that reaction of splitting the ATP molecule to drive the um, um, molecule against its concentration gradient. So that's active transport, primary active transport. Right. Okay. This is where it gets a little tricky, right? Because secondary active transport, right? So, <clears throat> so example in your in the book it gives is with um, transporting glucose. So. Um, okay, so, <clears throat> okay, so, this is an example it gives, and this, this isn't necessarily related to, um, the, uh, action potential, but we'll use this as an example, so, um, so we've got, basically what secondary active transport is, is that you're using um, an active transport to create a concentration gradient, which will drive another transport to happen that normally would require energy, okay? So, all right, just a preview, okay? <laughs> okay, so example of this would be, um, So it's called a sodium potassium pump, and this is what basically rebalances these um, sodium and potassium levels. <clears throat> okay, 
because after that, because the nitro potential, we're shooting out sodium and we're also shooting out potassium to repolarize. But eventually, we need to get both of those um, back into the cell, right? Right. All right. So. <clears throat> What happens is we're, we need to use active transport because there's going to be a relatively high amount of potassium in the cell, right, and then a low amount outside the cell. So we're using ATP to bring potassium in, and in the process, we're going to push some sodium out. Okay, and this requires ATP. Okay, <clears throat> so we're rebalancing, um, or we're bringing um, potassium back in. It requires energy because it's going from low to high, and then this sodium just kind of goes out because it gets the opp opportunity, right? Right. And and then so what happens is we end up. The more we do this, we're creating a high concentration of sodium out here. Okay? So we're, we're creating a concentration gradient. We're making it more sodium out here, less down here. Um, and then, right here, we've got this. This is where the secondary happen, happens. Because this is primary and active transport, right? And then we've got act secondary active and so what this is is let's say we have glucose that needs to get into the cell it's this big molecule that can't diffuse through and it's really big and, and it needs a transport protein but the concentration of glucose is usually higher on the inside of the cell relative to the outside right right because it only you only need to put a little bit of glucose to because compared to this small space like the whole body, right? There's right. going to be a higher concentration of glucose, right? So glucose is wanting to go from low to high, but your cell needs glucose to create more energy, right? So what it does is because this concentration gradient is going from high to low, the sodium going back in the cell drives this to pull um, glucose into the cell with re without requiring an, an initial input of energy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we used one ATP to bring potassium back in and at the same time bring glucose in. It's like killing two birds with one stone type of thing, right? Because both require energy, but we're using this to create a concentration gradient which will just, it'll just come right back in, but that that driving force of sodium going into the cell helps drive glucose along with it, okay? And there's a couple of words that determine, because this is like just one example. This would be an example of symport, because the two things are going in the same direction, right? If they're going opposite direction, it would be antiport. Just kind of some terminology, right? Um, and like it could be two antiports, it could be two symports, or technically, well, this doesn't always have to be two things. It could just be one thing creating a concentration gradient, but usually it's coupled with something else to kind of make it more efficient, right? right. Because we need potassium in the cell, right? So that's going to require energy, so might as well, you know, pump, let the sodium out to create a gradient to pump this back in to keep you from having to use two ATP every time this happens. Okay? So yeah, secondary active transport is just basically combining an active with a passive, but kind of passive, right? Because it's still going low to high, but it's using this energy. Right. Got Sorry, it. was that a lot more confusing? Or? No, I got it. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Man. So it doesn't use the ATP directly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like a vicarious usage of the, the ATP because right. your body tries to you know be very conservative of the ATP usage and so it kind of uses a lot of things to make that more efficient.